Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Namaste. Welcome to the list, uh, live session on the course about the course content related to organization development and uh, change in 21st century. I have already received some of the queries and uh, you are welcome to put up your queries in the chat box. And as, as, as I see the chat box, I will look at the queries and uh, respond to this. So as there is a first uh, question about what is the flow of today's uh, live session, actually the flow is going to be decided by your queries. So I have not structured in a specific way for this session. As the queries are posted, I will be taking those up and uh, that will form the most of the content of this uh, session. The first query I received uh, is from uh, Mr. Akhil and his question is <clears throat> what is the scope of research in organization development? Organization development is the field about uh, bringing the desired change in the organizational context, in the organizational setting in a conscious way. So, you can see the scope of the organization development is immense because every organization wishes to grow, they wish to develop, they want to be known as uh, better organizations than their counterparts, uh, they wish to increase their productivity etc. etc. So the number uh, of the objectives or the things which are required for any organization uh, a range from the financial health to customer satisfaction to improving the processes and systems to learning and development. In all these fields, organization development plays an important role. So, organization development research has, this, uh, has an immense scope related to any of these subfields, whether it is productivity enhancement, financial performance. Uh, enhancing or developing culture, bringing about desired changes and uh, desired uh, development in the individual behavior or team behavior. There are a lot of research questions uh, about human behavior in organizations, uh, teamwork and group behavior in organizations and how as a whole organization uh, can look at the challenges and perform well. So depending on the, the organizational concerns, there are a lot of unanswered questions uh, related to organization, which are related to organization development. We need to look at the real life issues, the real life problem and then we need to uh, identify the unanswered questions, the questions which are not answered in the literature. and that can be the beginning or the starting point for our research. A research can also be about designing new interventions. In this course, we have discussed uh, some interventions, large number of interventions rather, but that is not the exhaustive list. There can be many more in interventions at individual group, organization, culture, process, systems related. So, uh, depending on the real life issues, you can develop or at least propose new types of challenges, uh, new type of interventions and uh, that can be a very good research in itself. So that is my response to the first question about the scope of the research in OD uh, in organizations. Uh, Charu has asked the question, scope of real life project. I like to take part in real life project. 
in OD. My suggestion is shall get in touch with the LNOD people in any organization or get in touch with some business leaders or senior managers who wish to bring about changes, positive changes at the individual group systems and process HR related changes in their organization and you can offer your support to that person or to that department. You can say that uh, I have systematically trained in the field of OD. Uh, depending on the uh, challenges you are facing, I can do literature review, I can search for life, uh, I can search for the real life case studies, I can show the correspondence of some of the case studies with your organizational challenges and can propose some of the challenge uh, can can propose uh, some of the de developmental interventions and uh, that can be a reasonable uh, offer uh, from your side to get a real life uh, project from an department or from the uh, senior manager in any organization The next question is by Dr. Neeta Mehta uh, who writes that what role leadership plays in OD and can you give some examples which have been greatly discussed related uh, leadership and OD. No OD intervention can be successful without support of leaders. So uh, I can look at the examples where I have had opportunity of uh, bringing uh, OD interventions and I can also suggest some of the examples where uh, the great leaders, very well known leaders supported and nurtured certain specific types of OD interventions. If I look at my example, uh, it was a manufacturing company that was my first OD intervention where uh, engineers mo mostly the 85 percent people 85 percent of employees were engineers basically they were the engineering consulting firms who used to consult very big projects related to oil exploration or the uh, civil constructions other civil constructions or uh, setting up some plants etc they realized that uh, engineers are good at the technical skills but uh, they are not as effective as they should be in the attitude towards work, better planning their time, better managing relationships at work. So that was initiated, the OD intervention was initiated to meet these uh, developmental uh, needs and uh, this need was recognized by the very accomplished uh, and otherwise very skilled engineers mainly because their seniors pointed this out. Uh, so had leaders wouldn't have pointed out the need for the development in this field, uh, engineers would not have turned uh, for the program and for the intervention. But they, uh, they accepted it because uh, leaders demonstrated, leaders pointed out and they and the leaders also gave appropriate examples to uh, suggest that what they were saying was actually not uh, just their personal perception but this is what general perception is and uh, they will be benefited by this kind of body intervention. Then uh, interventions in the software company where uh, I was asked to lead an OD intervention to bring leadership uh, in terms of the strategic thinking and design thinking amongst the uh, team leaders and the project leads. This was also well identified by the leaders and leaders not only identified developmental needs but they offered their services as mentors to the participants of the program because participants were not only supposed to give the, uh, not only supposed to receive the instructions or attend the program, but also uh, were, uh, 
mentoring also was made as an integral part of the ODI intervention. So there also the leader, this is another example where leader uh, pointed out the need for development and participants recognized that and uh, leaders not only pointed out but acted as the uh, mentors in the development journey of the participants. Then there are many other examples where well-known leaders uh, have identified certain specific types of the OD intervention. So, in the during the course itself, uh, I mentioned about Jack Welch and the confrontation meeting. They they call it workout meetings uh, in in G. That is the uh, that is taken up with the active support and uh, active initiative of the uh, uh, leader of that time, Mr. Jack Welch. We also have example uh, in India where, um, uh, where uh, in the, for example, in the Piramal group, leaders took uh, active interest in uh, using appreciative inquiry. And uh, there is another example of uh, ACG worldwide, and leaders took active interest in uh, using appreciative inquiry as as a only intervention and whole organization went through that process. Uh, so uh, Dr. Mehta Mehta, OD is successful only mostly when leaders play active role, they take interest and when they are involved, uh, the possibility of the success of OD, OD intervention goes to great heights. Uh, Mr. Atul has asked this question about does OD, uh, probably uh, he mean is OD limited to organization or explored at individual level how to design individual OD intervention. There are OD interventions aimed at individual level, team level and organization level. So if you look at our course closely and follow the lectures, you will see the first sets, first set of OD interventions are related to uh, individual level interventions. And you might remember we discussed uh, Johari window that is one of the examples of uh, OD level intervention which is at the individual level. We also talked about the process interventions or sensitivity training. These are also individual level interventions and we hope that with this these individual level interventions we will see uh, the positive impact at the organizational level because individuals will develop, their uh, uh, belief and attitude will change for better as a result of that, their behavior uh, with their colleagues, their approach towards work will become uh, better, uh, more functional and in that process this individual level change and development will result into a positive change at the uh, group level and the, at the organizational level. So there is a whole range of OD interventions which are aimed at individual level development. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, there is a question by Charu asking that please take session where whole training session of OD would sum up. Probably you are asking for a uh, or a recap session. A recap session, yes, we can uh, do that. Maybe in the next uh, live session, we can have a quick recap. I can present a slide or two, which can, uh, to a large extent, sum up the OD intervention. And uh, but in nutshell, you can see that OD intervention is a step-by-step -step process, which is starts with recognizing of the need, diagnosis identifying the level of interventions, doing the intervention, seeing the result and examining that, examining the impact. So, uh, and the interventions can be at the individual group organizational level. Uh, 
when we take about the human processes and the interventions can also be at the HR level, process level, systems level, organization design ability. So these are the axes on which the whole OD course revolves. Uh, Mr. Atul uh, Bhatkas uh, has asked an uh, interesting question that can the balanced scorecard be administered as tool for OD? Uh, yes, I firmly believe that the balanced scorecard can be implemented as a tool for OD intervention because balanced scorecard requires people to think in a holistic way about the job, uh, about their job and the work of their uh, department. So they need to look at the connection of their role with the organization and the role, uh, uh, their role with the team or department and the role of the department or team with their organization. So <clears throat> that understanding has to be there for identifying the appropriate indicators of performance of the four quadrants of the balanced scorecard. So that requires understanding at the organizational level eventually and uh, that uh, that is very much in the spirit of uh, organization development field. So in this way balanced scorecard has to be in rather administered as a tool for OD and change. Uh, secondly, balanced scorecard integrates balanced scorecard has learning and OD as one of the indicators. In fact, learning and uh, development is an enabler for organizations to move from point A to the better point B in terms of their financial performance, process and systems and uh, uh, customer service and, and the customer engagement. So, OD is not only, uh, the balance scorecard can not only be, uh, can be implemented as OD intervention, in fact, OD is integrated in the balance scorecard because balance scorecard includes what? Customer satisfaction, financial performance, uh, process and systems and uh, learning and development. So, learning and development is very much part of the OD. So, OD is part of the overall balanced scorecard work. Can OD be used as a tool for right sizing? Uh, yes, OD can be used as a right sizing. You will be having a session where we will look at the change in the organization design. And within that, we are also going to look at how it can be used uh, in the right sizing related projects. We need to understand that attrition can be caused just based on reducing the headcounts and in this way reducing the cost. Attrition can be caused also by uh, combining certain systems and processes and in this way we can save some of the, uh, we can cut down some of the positions and in turn we can ask people holding those positions to leave the organization. Uh, right sizing can also be done by uh, redesigning the systems and processes wherein we, in, uh, wherein we try to include as many people as possible in a productive way and uh, also help those people who cannot be uh, absorbed can help people to find opportunities elsewhere. I would like to give an example about the right sizing and attrition that this is, uh, this is a kind of uh, um, a ideal example or a case study. This is given in the book by uh, written by Peter Cruzan and his associates leading with wisdom. Uh, leading with wisdom has one has a uh, lot of life stories and uh, biographical notes about some of the very renowned and very reputed business leaders who uh, who uh, give who are examplars of leading with wisdom. One of the examples is uh, of a leader named Colin. 
he was the head of a paper mill in denmark i think uh, uh, so the colin had this tough job of right sizing this organization because organization was suffering from losses they have exhausted all other means to cut the cost increase the revenue but uh, somehow the financial health was not coming to uh, to the better state and uh, they recognized that until we ask people to leave we cannot save the cost any further and that looked like the inevitable step what colin did was very interesting he decided otican is the name of the company and he decided that in the otican no person over 50 years will be asked to leave everybody who had to leave who has to leave will be uh, given a air time will have a face to face meeting with the ceo himself in that case colin is the ceo and he would have got the uh, one to one uh, meeting opportunity uh, with colin to state and tell about his experience or her experience and uh, his or her take about this whole uh, episode and last but very important and very unique uh, rule colin followed what was that that was a uh, people who have the highest opportunity greatest opportunity to find jobs outside of the organization will be asked to leave first so the most competent people will be asked to leave first because they have highest opportunity so and uh, apart from some of the very core functions people who are very good uh, in their job or they are masters or experts in their field will be asked to leave first this is a very unique law and they followed it and uh, they did it they they followed these uh, rules and the whole attrition and the right sizing exercise was conducted according to these three rules very soon um, organizations organize this organization could rebound and the financial results were amazing people uh, who remained with the organization remained very positive about the whole process even people who had to leave the organization became the positive ambassadors for the organization and uh, within couple of years the company which was finding it difficult to sustain financially became very very healthy financially and as well as in terms of the process and systems uh, we will be looking at this aspect of right sizing in the lectures to come but one thing i can share at this moment that ensuring the uh, it is uh, in the right sizing process in the attrition process it is not only organization has to deal with the people who are asked to leave organizations have to deal with the people who are left with the organization and what what organization has to leave uh, has to uh, deal organization has to deal with the fear and the anxiety and stress of the people who left behind the, in the who are still with the organization because that's the uh, that's a very important because uh, concern because those who are not asked to leave they have this uh, uh, fear of uh, being asked to leave any time so organization has to deal with that uh, that uncertainty uh, and these are the there are the ways we can we can uh, Uh, address those and that's all that all that we will be discussing in the uh, right sizing related uh, session or session related to the change in the organization design uh someone is asking please share the name of the book and authors uh please go to the uh, home page of the course you will see the textbook textbook i'm following is by worley and cummins organization development and change and uh, there are at least 15 uh, other readings being mentioned which are being used uh, in the different sessions in during this course we also give full references of particular readings based on which a particular slide is based so please follow the references and you will get the names of the book 
uh, the textbook as well as the reference books as well as articles. Uh, MSM, uh, Atulji is asking, uh, MSME sector has potential but due to non-professional approach, ownership uh, issues, how to uh, penetrate OD and organization development, uh, how to facilitate increase the top line. Uh, different organizations will require different OD interventions to, uh, to make the top line uh, look better and uh, healthier. But there is a complete session on organization development and change in MSME sector. So towards the end of this course, I think 18th or 19th session, some uh, somewhere 18th, between 18th to 20th session, there is a, a, a full delivery on uh, OD in the MSME uh, sector. So you can uh, wait till then or uh, lectures are already uploaded on the YouTube. You can just search the eighth week's lecture and you will be able to find the you will be able to find the uh, session on OD and uh, organization development change in the MSME sector. So book on right sizing I will be uh, so in the uh, organization development uh, lecture I have mentioned the specific reference about the uh, right sizing related content. Siddha Ramanji is asking, uh, even though OD is a tool, in most of the corporates, the culture, systems and team develops by visionary leaders and vibrant teams. OD solutions to a company which is below threshold level. Uh, if I have understood your question correctly, uh, you are saying that uh, OD happens, uh, organizations develop or teams develop through visionary leadership and vibrant teams, yes, but visionary leadership and vibrant teams do something and uh, what they do can be termed as OD. There is no limitation of the OD intervention. Some of the interventions are more common, they are there in the textbooks, but uh, leaders, facilitators, LNOD professionals, all of them can develop uh, very innovative OD interventions, which may not be part of the uh, any part of any book, and that might be still very relevant for that particular organization. So, whenever organization develops, we can say OD is happening. It might be happening consciously, it might not be happening consciously. Uh, th th there is one question asked by Nandan Kumar, uh, how frequently a growing organization shall adopt the developmental programs in order to cope with changes? Uh, Organizations have to constantly look for the weak signals and they need to pick up the weak signals before they become strong signals. For any particular change process uh, which generally arise from the industry environment or general environment. We need to, uh, uh, the smart organizations keep looking for the signals and smart organizations are called smart because they can pick up the signals quickly and accordingly they can strategize. I must also share that great organizations do not look for environmental signals at all. These organizations imagine the possibilities. We have example of Tesla or WhatsApp and uh, M-Pesa, the Vodafone. These are the organizations which, um, or even for that matter, uh, uh, Zoom. 
they develop the uh, products they develop certain systems they identified the opportunity much before environment started asking for those things very strongly and vehemently so uh, organizations have to constantly look for and for that they need to constantly engage in the conversations with uh, and they have to constantly take input from the people who are working on the edges means organization people who are working at the interface of two uh, or more number of stakeholders for example field sales force now field sales force not only is familiar to your organization's systems and processes and products and services uh, field sales force always having idea about uh, the services and products offered by the competitors now competitors can uh, uh, can change the strategy and that will be first visible to the field sales force we need to keep engaging the people like these to keep giving the signals to keep supplying the information about what is going on in the field similarly people who are interacting with the regulators uh, people who are in the advertising field in your organization they are constantly looking at the internal organizational processes as well as the they are interacting with the environment now these are the people who can give interesting insights which will have a strategic uh well so that's how organizations have to keep on adopting for the better there was uh, one more question uh, came earlier that can consultant recommend i think dharmesh ji has asked this question uh, can a consultant recommend working on both gap opportunity gaps as well as performance gap answer is yes i would like to quote the great od practitioner and great od person uh, he is also a great academician he uh, is no more uh, professor ishwar dayal professor ishwar dayal was the first director of iim lucknow and he was a very dynamic professor uh, in iim ahmedabad he used to say that until confrontation is has happened uh, between the client and the consultant od has not happened so that's where the answer is a consultant is the one who can not only identify the performance gap but the opportunity gap as well and good consultants good od consultants keep pointing out uh, both the types of gaps Mr. Sita Raman ji has asked for more Indian examples. I would like to point out that uh, in this course we had deliberately combined the Indian examples with the examples uh, coming from the Western countries or other countries. So uh, you will see multiple examples of the Indian uh, organizations in the social entrepreneurship related session. you also see some of the hypothetical examples where the name of the organization is changed for example uh, bizsoft we talked about a bizsoft case during the course now this uh, this is not the real name but this is suddenly a real company and uh, i have had opportunity of uh, introducing odi interventions in that but because of the uh, confidentiality clause uh, we have to change the or disguise the name of the organization so likewise there are other organizations as well uh, uh, where the names are changed so these are mostly indian organizations and uh, we also have the cases like trichy police case or mahindra and mahindra and novalis uh, merger case and uh, many other examples uh, in the Uh, appreciating inquiry related sessions where a lot of indian examples are also included akhil ji has asked that uh, what is the scope of research in od you can look at the uh, individual level interventions and unanswered questions there are immense scope but you need to go to the field first 
and identify the research questions based on the uh, challenges of the OD facilitators as well as uh, business leaders. So, what are the unanswered questions in at the individual level intervention or team level intervention um, or organization level intervention? I am not deli I am deli I am not telling a specific research question uh, deliberately. Otherwise, uh, you will not think uh, further. But what I can say is that uh, if you do the field work you will certainly come across some interesting questions. My suggestion to anyone who is interested in uh, research in OD is to uh, for anyone who is interested in the OD research, I, my strong recommendation is that they must do the field work. What is the meaning of that? Uh, meaning of that is they must associate themselves with some consultant or uh, um, if they themselves are the practitioner, uh, talk to the business leaders, look at what are the most challenging problems of organization which they can handle as OD intervention, uh, as, a, as, as OD expert or uh, uh, with whom they can interact as uh, with uh, uh, who are the OD inter uh, or the other OD experts who are interacting with the business leaders who are working with the organizations. Talk to them if possible assist them in the OD intervention, you will come across lots of unanswered questions. When you come across unanswered questions, you go to the literature in the field of OD. See, are these responded, are these questions answered? If they are answered, see whether those answers are relevant in your field, whether you see those answers relevant for the organizations where, from where you have identified these questions. And uh, if you see those answers are working, then look for other questions. And if you see those answers are not working, the answers coming from the literature are not working in the field related to particular aspect of OD, then you have got an interesting um, site where you can develop your own answer and test those answers. That's the whole uh, research processes. So that's how you need to engage in the OD research. You need to engage into OD research not as a pure researcher but as OD consultant and OD practitioner as well. There is a uh, one question by Sir Indrajit. How to improve the attitude of the teamwork? Uh, we discussed uh, quite a few team-based OD interventions, wherein we look at the attitude related. For example, when we look at the sensitivity training, that points out the importance of a certain attitude and then that brings out some dysfunctional attitudes which is reflected in people's uh, behavior in the team setting. That is one intervention. Uh, outdoor activities, maybe it is tracking or some other outdoor activities. In those activities as well we come to know about the attitude of the people and we also come to know the limitations of those attitudes and the ways and these exercises provide the opportunity to reflect upon how to change the attitude uh, as part of the OD intervention. Hot seat intervention is again a team based OD intervention uh, wherein we can uh, aim at developing attitude. What is the hot, uh, the hot seat uh, OD intervention is a quick and, uh, and very effective OD intervention wherein a person sits facing the wall and persons, the team members generally sit behind this person so that uh, the back of the person is towards the other team members and other team members can tell uh, to this person what can make him even better a team member, even better uh, executive or a manager. This is best done uh, with the help of a coach and a coach can help to, uh, to, uh, to summarize these uh, 
feedback by the team members uh, he the, the person uh, likewise we can do all with all the team members then team member can talk to the leader and look at the data the data which is coming from the other team members can look at the data and help with the supervisor apply his or her own mind okay what out of those five six eight things being told about him as a developmental uh, uh, intervention what are the few things i must try i must change i must improve upon to become a better executor or better team member that's a very quick uh, uh, example of uh, od intervention to change uh, to bring about change in the attitude and there is a question about the what type of test we have to prepare for the certification exam um, uh, the questions will be uh, short answer questions and uh, multiple choice questions so like the kind of questions you keep getting uh, in the test after each session so, uh, most of the questions will be like those mcqs in the uh, final exam as well so uh, thank you very much this uh, if there are no other questions we can conclude our uh, live session if you have uh, still uh, questions or if you come across some other question there is a discussion board always available you can um, pose your queries on the uh, discussion board uh, most likely your query will be sorted through email and if we think that your query will ha will have will have a larger appeal it means it might be relevant and for the people at large who are attending this course we can take those queries in the next uh, interactive live session so thanks very much for uh, part to be the sincere participant i hope that you will retain this sincerity go through all the sessions take the tests uh, with all sincerity because that eventually build your knowledge base which you can apply uh, in the real time od intervention or uh, your research so wish you all very best we will continue to interact uh, with uh, with this assurance i take your leave thank you namaste